Today's video, we are continuing to work on this Dodge Dakota with the 5.9 liter V8 Magnum, the 360 cubic inch. This is gonna be part two of figuring out what is going on with this engine, what's wrong with this engine, why is it making this noise? Mainly the ticking noise. So if you haven't heard the ticking noise, And we're trying to figure out what it is. So it's making some kind of noise and it only does it when it's unloaded. If you're on the gas, the noise goes away. If you're off the gas, the noise goes away. If you're running it here, just in park, neutral, and you rev it up, you hear this clattering sound. So we went through a few things. We checked the rockers. There doesn't appear to be any issues there. I was hoping or thinking maybe it was a dead lifter, but um, I'm seeing some normal action out of all the rockers when we pulled the valve covers. And what I want to achieve in this video is hopefully we can get to the bottom of it or narrow it down. Um, so we checked some stuff. We took off the inspection plate. The flex plate looked okay in the last episode. And we were checking that to maybe see if there was a crack in it. And I picked up some extra tools. So we ended up getting a stethoscope and I got a boroscope. But before we get into those, um, since I had the valve covers off and actually ran the engine without the valve covers just to watch the action of it, got a little bit of oil seepage. So I can't even run it right now without it making an absolute smoke show. So I'm gonna pull it out, let it run. And at the same time, I did pick up some seafoam. So I'm gonna run some seafoam through the engine uh, before we actually drop the engine oil. So I wanna run this in here and then we'll drop the engine oil and then I have a boroscope, which is a camera essentially. I picked that up, it showed up, so I'll show you guys that. And we're gonna, after we drop the oil, we're gonna go through the oil pan and uh, check in there, see what's going on in there. But let's pull this thing out, get it running and uh, see if we can't make it to make the noise for you guys again and uh, see if we can get to the bottom of this. All right, so I actually got it making the noise pretty good here, so let's see if I can show you guys. transmission because when I touch the block or even the transmission housing that's what I'm hearing it the most all right so I just shut it off for a minute so the reason um, it's idling high is I just put a little bit of feeler gauge here behind the uh, idle screw there just so that it would rev up so that's what you're hearing is it running around 2000 and I got the stethoscope there and when I put it on that transmission like I was mentioning like right around the bell housing that's where I'm getting the most noise out of the stethoscope and then if I touch the oil pan, I don't really hear anything. If I touch the block, I kind of hear it. So it's got to be one or the other. Either it's coming out of this transmission or it's potentially coming out of the block. I haven't narrowed it down just yet, but that's where I'm at right now. All right, we got her up on here. Let's try and figure out where this damn noise comes from. All right, so you guys heard that noise coming when we turn over the engine. So since it's hard to determine whether it's coming from the engine or the transmission, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take out the bolts holding the converter to the flex plate, there's four of them, and I'm gonna turn over the engine. But just before I do that, I wanna show you guys what it sounds like with everything connected. It's uh, kind of a little bit of a screeching sound, so I don't know. Could very well be something in the engine, but we obviously wanna try to diagnose it as good as possible. But let me turn it over the engine with the transmission connected, you guys can hear it that way, and then uh, we'll move on to plan B. 
Are right, you guys ready for this little screeching? Something doesn't sound too happy. Let's go ahead and we'll take out the flex plate bolts and we'll see what we got. Okay, so we've got the bolts out from the torque converter to the flex plate. Still kind of making that little screech sound there. Let me illustrate. So it makes that. So that's the noise that comes out of it. I can't turn it over fast enough from the crank bolt to get it to click back and forth. But I think what I'm gonna do, uh, originally I wasn't gonna see foam this, but I think what I'm gonna do is just drop the oil on this and uh, let's run that scope up there and see what we can see in here because I've got that camera. So we'll let the oil drain and then we'll stick it into the oil pan and see if we uh, get any more answers. Okay, so we got our catch pan, clean catch pan so we can see what kind of material and let's drop the oil. So while the oil just continues to drain a little bit, I took off the oil filter. So let's go ahead. I got a filter cutter. Let's cut the filter open and see if there's a ton of material in here or not. Might just give us more clues. So let me lay out some cloths here so we can kind of put it on some clean cloths. Now that we're all out of here, we'll take out the element. Here we are. I'm trying not to make an absolute mess everywhere. There's the gasket. your things this is a Mopar filter too you guys just uh, so you know but I don't see any big material in here Ooh, we got some oil running away on us okay so let's go ahead we're gonna pour this into this clear container and see what we do or don't see There's definitely some metallics in here but nothing like crazy crazy so this filter has about 2,000 miles on it you guys I don't know if you're able to see there there is some small chunks there here let's turn up the light so that's 2,000 miles worth Definitely a little bit of metal in there. Let's take this out for a second. So, like I said, it's not like crazy, crazy alarming. This does have a few thousand miles on it, so let's go ahead and see if there's any big chunks of anything major. Uh, some of it just looks like gasket material. But let's go ahead and let's stick the camera in there and uh, see if we can see anything visually in that engine. All right, so we're seeing a little bit of pieces, but again, 23 year old engine, <clears throat> a few thousand miles on that oil change. I do have this little camera set up, so this thing is super trick. Uh, I'm gonna do a screen record for you guys, but you guys can see what I'm doing. Essentially, it's got a long camera, it comes with this little box. You pair it up to your cell phone and you get some crazy, quality images coming out through here and you can also adjust how bright this little light is in the end so you can make it bright dim 
depending on what you're working on or what you're trying to see. So you can adjust it so that you can see all the different images or you can turn it completely off, but pretty cool little thing. So let's go ahead, we're gonna stick this in there and then uh, we'll see what we got. All right, so I'm gonna stick this camera in through here and we're gonna start poking around and see what we can or can't see. Probably gonna have to turn up the brightness, I would assume, because it is gonna get dark up in there. Okay, so right now I'm just turning the crank and I found a couple rods that look like, and it's hard to, I found the perfect view and then of course I knocked the camera out right when I wanted to show you guys. But it looks like the crank moves, but then this one rod, you can see that it doesn't start moving and I can go back and forth with this, which is the crank. This rod's moving accordingly. This one looks like it's kind of not moving immediately with the crank, so could possibly be rod bearings, that's what some people said. Also, you'll notice that inside this engine really does not look all that great. It looks like there's, uh, it's pretty old and uh, tired inside perhaps, but let me show you guys rocking that back and forth. All right, so what I want you guys to pay attention to is this. So that arrow is the crank itself. This is the rod in question. And over here is another connecting rod that's actually moving when I turn the crank. So you'll notice, pay attention right here. So you'll see the crank, I'm rotating it back and forth, but that rod is not moving in that given play. So you can see right there. If you look at this rod, this rod moves whenever I move the crank. But looking back here and focusing here, you'll notice that the crank moves, but the rod doesn't, and you can see the play right here. So this is what I'm wondering and thinking, and this might be the actual issue is this rod bearing right here. All right guys, well pretty much at this point, it looks like from what you guys can see on the video, the crank moves, but that rod is delayed in moving. So you can see that potentially there is a play in at least one of the rods. So what I'm thinking of doing, I could just you know say, okay, whatever, we'll just swap the engine. But I think Comment down below what you guys wanna see. I think what's gonna be a little bit more interesting is for us to actually confirm that. So I think rather than leaving this whole thing as an open-ended mystery, the engine doesn't burn any oil, it doesn't smoke, it doesn't do anything weird. We drove across the country with it. There's hardly any material in here, but if it's just a case that it needs rod bearings, I think what we're gonna to try to do, you guys, is that way we can kind of put this to rest. We'll pull the pan in the next video and we'll double check the rods, see what's going on. If it is just the rod bearings, we'll see if we can throw a set of rod bearings in it. We'll check the crank, see if uh, it looks half decent shape. If it is, then we'll go ahead, throw rod bearings in it, and then we can actually put it back together and hopefully we can see if that solves it. I think that sounds a little more interesting, but let me know down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video.